Uh, in this example, we'll be encapsulating 0.3 milligrams of mRNA. This is enough for a small in vivo study to dose several mice and includes a little bit of surplus um, for characterization and to uh, account for any losses that may occur during downstream processing when you do amicon filtration, uh, tangential flow filtration, or, and sterile filtration. So at first, um, you'll need to measure enough RNA to do the, uh, to, for this encapsulation. Typically, when you order your mRNA, it'll come in roughly one milligram per mil concentration. And then using this uh, equation that you see here, uh, you can calculate the volume that you're going to need. And so in this case, since we're doing 0.3 milligrams, we're going to need 0.3 milliliters of mRNA. So next, we'll be uh, calculating the dilution of your mRNA in the formulation buffer. So the formulation buffer is an acidic buffer that was provided with Genvoy, uh, and it's essential in order to ensure that your ionizable lipid is fully ionized and to ensure that you have very high encapsulation efficiencies. And so you'll be diluting the, uh, the mRNA that we just uh, calculated in the previous step in the, uh, in the formulation buffer. And so to do that, we need to know a few parameters about our formulation. We'll be using Genvoy ILM at a concentration of 12.5 millimolar. Uh, we'll be choosing an N to P ratio of 4 to 1. Now the N to P ratio is the ratio between the cationic charges in your lipid and the anionic phosphates on the RNA backbone. So picking a 4 to 1 ratio means there are four times as many uh, cationic charges as anionic charges. And we find that this ratio is um, a good place to start for mRNA formulations. For siRNA, for example, uh, the standard N to P ratio would be 3 to 1. Um, you can play with N to P ratios between 4 to 1 and 6 to 1, but we'll do 4 to 1 for this example. Uh, the other parameter that you'll need to know is your flow rate ratio, which we'll be choosing as 3 to 1 is our standard uh, formulation for Genvoy. So using the table that's provided with your uh, Genvoy ILM, you can see that uh, by starting with a working Genvoy concentration of 12.5 millimolar, a flow rate ratio of 3 to 1, and an N to P ratio of 4, uh, we're we require a concentration of the RNA to be one, uh, 0.17 milligrams per mil. Next, we'll be calculating the dilution of your mRNA in the formulation buffer. So we decided that we're going to encapsulate 0.3 milligrams of mRNA and calculated that that will be 0.3 milliliters. Uh, and our final concentration from the table needs to be 0.17 milligrams per mil. And so using this form dilution form formula, um, and rearranging for V2, you'll see that uh, we'll need a final volume of 1.76 milliliters. That means we'll be mixing 0.3 milliliters of mRNA with 1.46 milliliters of PNI formulation buffer. So we'll start by pipetting the PNI formulation buffer first. So we'll do this in two parts as I have a one mil pipette. So we'll start with one mil of the formulation buffer. I put that into the intermediate container. And I'll take the rest of the, the buffer needed, which is uh, 460 uh, microliters. So next I'll be adding the mRNA. So this is uh, 0 0.3 uh, milliliters, so 300 microliters. Add that to the buffer. And typically at this point you would vortex this uh, on medium setting for a few seconds. Next, we'll be preparing Genvoy for the formulation. You should receive Genvoy in a 12 point, or sorry, a 25 millimolar concentration. Uh, for this particular example, we're gonna dilute it to 12.5 millimolar. So um, for this formulation, since we're doing a two mil formulation at a flow rate ratio of three to one, that means we're going to need about 0 0.5 milliliters of Genvoy ILM. Um, I'm going to prepare a little bit of extra so that we have uh, a little bit of buffer so that we don't, um, so there's enough uh, of Genvoy to be used in, in the Ignite. So 
Typically, that's about 100 microliters more. So I'm just going to prepare 0 0.7 uh, milliliters in this case. So we have uh, excessive excess here. So I'll be mixing 0 0.35 milliliters of Genvoy. Then I'll be diluting that one to one with the same amount of ethanol. Just going to pipette up and down to mix. And there your Genvoy is ready. So now we're going to prepare the nanoassembler Ignite for the formulation. I'll use the quick run function. And in here, I'll be able to set the different parameters that we'll need. So first, we'll select the type of um, syringes that we'll be using in this experiment. So as for a 2 mil formulation, I'll need a, a 3 mil um, syringe on the, on the C inlet and a 1 mil syringe on the R inlet. Our flow rate ratio here is 3 to 1, which I will enter here on the touch screen. Our total volume here is 2 milliliters, as I said, and our total flow rate will be 12 mils per minute. I will also be including a little bit of start and end waste, 0.35 for start waste, 0 0.05 for end. Next, we'll load the solutions we just prepared into syringes. So we'll do this with the help of a blunt needle. I'll start with a 3 ml syringe for the mRNA. Um, remember, we prepared about 1.76 milliliters, and uh, we need 1.5 mils for this formulation. I'll draw a little bit more than that into the syringe. I'll start by drawing a small amount in first. This will uh, give me some headroom here to clear some of the, the bubbles in the syringe, which I'll do by tapping the side of the syringe here. Okay, with that, um, I will now draw. Uh, push the residual air out of the needle and um, push the fluid level straight to the tip. Okay. And uh, that'll lead me to fill the rest of the syringe. So here I'll draw a little bit more than 1.5 ml remove the blunt needle, and now I'll purge the rest of the uh, remaining air at the top against a laboratory tissue to prevent any spillage. So once the liquid uh, level is right to the tip of the syringe, you're good to go. And we still have some of the um, solution left over to do the ribogreen assay afterwards. Next, we'll load the Genvoy into a syringe. So for this, we'll use a 1 ml syringe, as we only have 0 0.5 milliliters of Genvoy. And again, I'll use the uh, blunt fill needle to help here. And as before, um, I'll draw a little bit of the solution in that allow me to clear the air from the syringe, top of the syringe. I'll push the fluid to the uh, tip of the needle and then continue filling. So again, um, I'm going to just draw all of the Genvoy uh, that we prepared into this syringe. We can always recover it afterwards. So with that, I'll draw a little bit of extra to pull the um, fluid out of the, uh, the needle tip. And with that, I will um, remove the air by um, pushing the plunger until the level of the liquid has reached the tip of the syringe like that. With that, you're good to go um, for the Genvoy. Next, we'll prepare the Ignite for formulation. We'll start by loading the uh, Ignite with the next-gen cartridge. So the cartridge goes into the slot like this. Next, we'll load the syringes into uh, the cartridge by rotating the rotating block up. This is the uh, 3 ml syringe that goes into the C channel. And this is a lure lock, so I'll twist it in place till it's firm. And then uh, we have our Genvoy in a 1 ml syringe 
that I'll place in here. Just like that. And um, replace the rotating block down to the starting position. Next, we'll add our collection tubes. So these are uh, standard 15 mil Falcon tubes. We'll start with the waste on the left. We'll snap that in and pull it down. And our sample collection tube on the right. Just like that. So we'll just close the lid, hit next. And here you'll see a summary of your formulation uh, and an indication that your formulation is ready to go. You have a new cartridge, it's the correct type of cartridge, and your lid is closed. It'll also ask you to check that your recipe is correct, your syringes are locked uh, into the cartridge, you've loaded enough reagent, and we've done all of that. And so um, with that, I can just press start. So here the paddles will approach the syringes and detect the bottom of the syringes automatically. So the first part of the formulation is collected in waste. The rest of the formulation is collected into your sample container. Progress bar here indicates that it's done. All of your parts then will return to the home position including your sample switch arm. And just like that, your formulation is complete. So once the formulation is complete, it'll say completed on the screen, and then you'll be safe to open the lid and retrieve your sample. So at this, uh, as the sample comes off of the instrument, uh, because we did a three to one uh, formulation, it'll be in about 25% ethanol. Typically you would dilute this right away um, and prepare it for downstream processing, such as tangential flow filtration, or at this scale, typically um, amicon filtration, which is a centrifugal filtration method. We'll unload uh, the rest of the instrument as well. So we'll take the waste, remove the syringes and the cartridge, and um, that is all disposable. And uh, last but not least, we will uh, do a quick wipe of all the surfaces, uh, and you're ready for your next run. So at this stage, we're going to um, size the particles using a dynamic light scattering instrument. This could be an important test at this point uh, to make sure the formulation itself has gone well and that it's worthwhile to continue on and commit to the downstream processing. So to do that, we'll dilute the particles uh, in a low volume cuvette. We'll start with 300 microliters of uh, PBS, which is the, um, the dispersant that's set in the Zeta sizer uh, software. And to that we will add um, 40 microliters of our uh, RNA LMP that we just prepared. So we'll add that to the cuvette here. I'll pipe head a few times uh, just to make sure it's mixed. So then it's important to just check that uh, there are no bubbles in uh, the sample. And to um, prepare the cuvette by wiping it. This goes into the Zeta sizer with the arrow um, facing that way. And with that, we'll be ready to uh, perform the sizing. We have an SOP prepared um, where we've set the, um, the dielectric of PBS, the uh, refractive index, and all of the properties of the dispersant. And so we'll just use that uh, previously saved uh, SOP. You'll find the details of that uh, in the appendix of your GenVoy user guide. So with that, I'll just hit start on the screen and the measurement should begin. So the measurement is done and we'll take a look at the results. Uh, you can see that uh, we have a pretty good single peak here. Uh, the average uh, diameter here, the Z average diameter is about 55 nanometers, which is consistent for this type of uh, RNA LMP. Uh, and we have a PDI of uh, 0.15, which is also uh, reasonably okay for this as well. And so, um, 
after you do the downstream processing, you may see changes in the size. So it's good to do a measurement before and after you do your um, TFF or your Amicon filtration. Uh, typically, you'll see smaller PDIs after um, you're done with the downstream processing. And when you look at the two different measurements on aggregate, you can see that they're very close together, about 55 nanometers, uh, and both have very good PDIs around 0.15. And that concludes the demo formulation of Genvoy ILM.